James Gleeson is one of Australia's most prominent painters and has been its main exponent of surrealism. For over six decades he has produced a vast body of paintings, drawings and collages. His paintings can be divided into two main periods, so-called classical surrealist works from 1938 to 1955, and over 400 very large works painted since 1983. The moment I saw the first uh, photograph of a, a serious work, I realised that was the direction in which I had to go. I, I never felt that uh, the realism that the eye takes in unaided was the total truth about what was real. I felt that there was always a, something underlying the visual appearance uh, that was as real as what you saw. And then somebody sent me out a little book on Dali, uh, My Conquest of the Irrational. Uh, I must have been 38 or some, or 39. And there were several other books. The Breton Manifesto had come out. There was a book by David Gascoigne. All, and Herbert Reed in art now. It, it, proposed the theory of surrealism and uh, it just simply clicked with me. Finding that way through was a feeling of liberation. I felt that I was getting out of the mould that had been set there for me and that was exciting, yes. Now it all began, I think, with the Dada movement, you know, in the First World War and the theory that any society that could allow that to happen must be wrong. Uh, therefore, they question the values of that society, uh, using ridicule as the, the main weapon. Uh, and that cleared the ground a bit. It, it opened up an area into which you know, Breton, the Surrealists, and aided and abetted by Freud and Jung, could uh, move. And the Surrealist manifesto then established the fact that this it could occur. You have to remember I was born in 1915 and my early years were surrounded by stories of the First World War yes. and uh, it came as a, a, a shock to me in the 30s when it became apparent that we were heading for another. You know, the horror of that First War as it came through to me as a child uh, left a very definite mark on my outlook mm -hmm. and then the horror of the stupidity that was allowing another world war to take place um, it beggared belief I couldn't believe that it was going to happen. As an artist Gleason has always followed his own line. In his early paintings and as a young man he explored and selected from various influences of European art. Yes, I think right from the very beginning I was sceptical of the dogma that surrealism was pure psychic automatism unmodified by ethical or aesthetic concerns. Well, I, I felt that it was not possible to avoid an ethical element, uh, an aesthetic element in making work. Uh, even Breton in the end came to realise that it didn't work. The automatic writing uh, was just nonsense. And even the surrealists that are now famous like Dali and Magritte, Ernst, uh, Tangi, none of them obeyed that followed that doctrine of removing any aesthetic consideration from their work. I, I read him quite deeply for two or three years in the 30s, and, uh, but in the end I felt that, again, we weren't getting the right answers. Uh, it, it was a brilliant, I think, interpretation of the way we think. Uh, but 
and behave, but uh, somehow it, it ultimately seemed superficial. And with Jung too, I think he's um, looking for those iconic symbols that embodied uh, our experience was interesting, but again was, you know, just one attempt. I, I think that is what I've, has happened to me over the years that I have um, changed my ways of thinking. Uh, initially I began by thinking of surrealism as a kind of remedy. Therapy. Yeah, therapy, uh, releasing the hidden uh, darknesses in the mind could perhaps uh, bring out a better balance. But uh, of course it didn't work like that. Italy was for me the greatest impact. I was able in 1948 to spend three months travelling around there in that summer. Uh, it was difficult because I had to get all sorts of permits and, and things, food rationing and things, but uh, it was the most wonderful experience because I really <laughs> raced through the Renaissance <laughs> in those three months and uh, it, it impacted on me in the most extraordinary way. You were shocked by the power of classicism? Yes, yes, yes. And then you had to react to it. You well, you know, Michelangelo especially, that terribilita, uh, showed me that that, that uh, beauty and terror, again, w was capable of... Yeah. of but uh, in the end, it wasn't enough. I, I felt uh, that it was in denial of what the Northern Europeans had done, mm -hmm. and Bosch and Bruegel, which was equally as valid in revealing what was below the surface. The meeting went smoothly, the talk flowed. The focus went on to his nearby works and on to the process of painting itself. You can only work with what you have. Uh, I, I think that everything that happens to you mm. comes into you, into your mind, subconscious mm. levels. Uh, and it's there, and that's the material you work with. I've just finished a painting, unfortunately it's gone into the gallery. I can show you a photograph of it, uh, based on Vermeer's painting of Delft. In the detail here, uh, I've brought in a sort of medieval uh, feeling emerging from the, you know, 17th century uh, build, uh, city. I've always been fascinated by that painting uh, and uh, even to the extent of going to where he would have painted the view from. Uh, and it stayed with me. Myths have always, I think, been a focus of my interest. Uh, because they do represent some deep sort of expression of experience. Uh, I, I, recently I've not started out with any uh, intention of using a myth as the basis for the painting, but sometimes it ends up that the painting does conveys for me something of the element of a myth that I uh, was aware of.